Hello, it's Aurel from Valoi, back again with the final video of this Valoi 360 walkthrough. So we've already talked about how to do the setup, about the different components and kind of what the system is and does. In this video, we're going to talk about how the process of scanning actually looks like. Once you've done the setup, what actually do you do? And then finally, I'm going to take the pictures onto the computer and show you some of the final conversion steps to create positive images. Over here we have the setup with the camera already attached to the copy stand and underneath we have the advancer attached onto the light source. Um, I know I'm going to be scanning 35mm film, in this case some slides. Uh, so first I'm going to do is adjust the rollers. Uh, these rollers are just uh, rubber rollers that can be adjusted sideways by just moving them. So I've just moved them to this 35mm uh, position in the middle and I'm just turning the knob to make sure they roll properly and then I'm going to do the other side. So with this in the right place, we can attach the holder. Here I've got just the holder with the scanning head attached, which it slides on. And I'm going to place that under, and it just sits in place like that. Uh, now we're essentially ready to put in some film, uh, but first I'm going to turn on my light source and just kind of pre-focus the camera. At this point the focus doesn't really matter, but it's uh, nice to make sure your framing looks okay. Um, here on the screen I can see that the framing looks a bit... Um, I'm a little bit too far away from the camera, so... I'm going to adjust it down just a tad. Once you get to these kind of distances, the this kind of macro magnification level and distance, the small adjustments even make a big difference uh, in terms of framing. So that looks pretty good. And now we're essentially ready to put in some film. The important thing is to use some gloves because you don't want finger marks on your film. Um, this is something people often miss and they get nasty marks on the film that are difficult to remo remove now, but uh, in terms of uh, archivability for the film, it also damages the film over time as your, your, the fats from your fingers kind of etch into the film. Um, so you can obviously scan um, full rolls or strips. We generally say to not, it's not really compatible with more less than uh, three strips, you, uh, three pictures on a strip. You can technically do two, but it's not very comfortable. So feeding the film through is just uh, sticking it into the holder and the first frame is now on the camera and now we can do the final focusing process. So this is just making sure our, our focus is just dialed in so we get the sharpest possible picture. Uh, in this case I'm going to use manual focus and uh, this camera with this lens automatically magnifies the picture, but if your, yours doesn't, then I really recommend using focus magnification. And focus peaking in this case is really helping us out to get just that sharp grain in focus. So we can see here that uh, it's all ready to scan, and uh, we really do recommend you get some kind of remote. You can absolutely use a two second timer or a 10 second timer, but it really slows down your scanning as you have to wait for those few seconds for every picture. The whole benefit of camera scanning is that it's so quick, so we don't want to slow it down. In this case, uh, it's a modern camera, so it has a phone connection with Wi-Fi, and I've already connected it, so I can just go ahead and take the picture. Um, from there, we're now on the first frame, so the film hasn't reached the rollers yet. But as we get to the second frame, I'm going to be catching it with the roller. So that's the second frame. And now it's caught with the rollers, so I'm going to use the rollers from here on out. The benefit of these rollers, uh, and something you should try and replicate even if you don't have the rollers, is just the precision of that framing. It's really important to try and get them in the right, in the same place every time, so that afterwards when we do the post-processing, you can just crop in uh, a little bit and keep it consistent every time, so your uh, crop doesn't show a black border on one image and, or a little bit more in the other direction on the other image. This uh, consistent frame, framing is a little bit annoying while you're doing it, in camera, but it really saves you time later, so it's worth spending that extra second just to get it in the right place. Um, 
you can set up grid lines on a lot of cameras, or in some cases, people like you tether the camera to a computer. That can be really beneficial to do exactly that. Uh, and it also obviously transfers the files automatically onto your computer. In this case, we haven't done it because a lot of people don't have a tethering capable camera or it's maybe it's not something they do. So here we have the uh, pictures just saved to the SD card. So now that we've scanned the pictures on this, uh, we're gonna look at them on the computer afterwards. But quickly, I wanna show you how that this would look if you didn't have the Advancer. Uh, for example, if you have this kind of setup with just the light adapter and the holder plate and then the holders on top, um, here, there's obviously no advance, but you'll be using your hands to pull the film through, which can be really effective. And uh, even some professional institutions prefer this over using a, an advance roller. It's really up to your personal preference. So I'm going to just transfer the 35 millimeter holder and show you what that looks like. Exactly the same holder, exactly the same uh, configuration. Otherwise, it's just that we don't have the advancer on top. So. In this case, the gloves are even more important as you will be actually holding the film throughout the whole roll. Same thing here, you just insert it on one side and you'll be looking, looking through and get the first frame picture framed up and then take your picture, push through the second frame. And, well, here I will be looking at the camera, but... Um, and once you get to the other side, it's usually easier, at least I think it's easier to just pull the film through. And at this point, you can go quite quickly. Only like that. The um, advanced system is nice for that precision I talked about earlier. But you can also learn to be very precise with this type of scanning system. That's it. Um, I'm now going to take the pictures from the camera onto the computer. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples of uh, conversion, both for negatives and also just look at these slides in the, on the computer afterwards. So I'll be back with the computer and the pictures imported to the computer. Now I've imported the pictures just from the memory card in this case. You could would already have them if you're tethering your computer to the camera. But I'm using this kind of dongle. Most computers these days don't have uh, memory card readers. So you can get a dongle like this and just insert a memory card. Um, here I have them open in Lightroom already. And I have two sets of different pictures for you to look at. First, uh, the slides that we just scanned earlier. Let's just have a quick look at those. This is completely unedited out of the camera. We've done nothing to them. Uh, usually with slides, there's not that much you have to do to make them look good. But personally, I like uh, lifting the shadows just a little bit. So I'm moving the shadow slider up uh, and then compensating by adding a little bit of, of blacks. Um, the white balance, you should be white balancing against your light source, uh, but you can also go ahead and adjust it a little bit afterwards. In this case, it's uh, like cold winter scenes. But once I'm happy with one slide, typically if they're well exposed slides, which these are, um, I can just sync the files across. You can click this uh, sync button, select which settings you want synced, in this case, essentially all of them. Um, and that will just throw all the settings uh, onto every picture. I've just rotated them so we can see them properly. Uh, final step is to crop them in and this is what I was talking about, the consistent um, cropping. Here this is a little sloppy because it was done on camera but you know, do this properly. <laughs> uh, crop one and hopefully we should be able to sync them across but you'll see that yeah the crop is a little, uh, is a little off and it doesn't quite uh, match up with the previous one, so I'll just adjust them. For slides, that's really all you need to do. Um, slides are very easy in the sense that they're already positives, so you only have to do final adjustments and, um, and you're ready to export them. Personally, I like um, taking a little look at the slides over a light source to actually see what the slide looks like to my eyes, and then I try to match that on the screen. Then moving on to negatives, which we didn't show scanning here, but it's exactly the same process in camera. Um, for negatives, this is negative. Lab. I'm going to use Lightroom and Negative Lab Pro. There are also several other softwares. If you're interested in different kinds of softwares, uh, we have a page on our website, valo.co. Uh, and we're also, over the next few months, going to make uh, new and more videos about uh, software conversions. But there are a few options out there. Some um, are plugins. Some are paid, some are free, and some are standalone uh, products, such as Film Lab app and uh, Smart Convert. 
So in this case, Lightroom, uh, I'm first going to, so I'm just following the instructions for negative lab pro. So I'm first um, white balancing against the border of the film. Then I'm going to sync those, uh, that white balance across. So now they all are white balanced against the border. And then I can open negative lab pro. And on Mac, you click uh, control or option N and then it opens. Um, here in the menu settings, I'm not going to go through it in much detail, but essentially what it's doing uh, is uh, cropping in a little bit, and that's not the final crop, it's just a kind of crop that Negative Lab Pro is using to analyze. And then you can choose your settings for what, your, what you want to do with them, uh, and click Convert. Negative Lab Pro isn't really AI, it's a mathematical algorithm that um, analyzes the pictures mathematically and tries to give you something quite close to neutral. The kind of problem of that kind of sort of process is that some scenes, for example, a uh, sunset can get balanced too much towards neutral. Sunsets aren't neutral. They're biased towards uh, reds and yellows, but you'll have to adjust for that yourself using the white balance sliders here on the bottom. But essentially, these are, these are really good um, starting points. Uh, I tend to do some adjustments here, and then if I'm feeling like these are pictures that are worth um, improving more, I just finish my settings and apply those, and do my things like final cropping, okay. and then I export them as TIFFs. I think it's easier to work with uh, TIFFs in Lightroom, and they're also a bit more archival because they don't rely on this um, separate piece of software. So here we have some um, final conversions. And you can always go back to Negative Lab Pro if you're not happy with um, how it looked in the first place. You can just jump back in and change the settings again. There you go. So now we're ready to export all of our pictures. We can go ahead in Lightroom and use the export pre uh, presets from Negative Lab Pro. And that's it. Now we've taken our setup from essentially parts, pieces that uh, you get from us, used our camera and macro lens, scanned the pictures and converted them into final really nice scans. This is a brief overview of the 360 system. There's a lot more to go into on detail and we didn't want to make a very long video for you to sit through. So instead, we're trying to keep up a library of shorter videos speak, talking about each individual detail uh, in detail. So you can learn more about those individual steps if you're confused about anything. This is a good overview, but do learn as much as possible and improve your technique and workflow to get the best results from camera scanning. So I hope that was really helpful to you and I'll see you in the next one.